So we've got our nails poking through there. Take a little copper rove, stick it on the point of the nail. Then with our rove driver, stick that on top. Make sure that's fairly well driven home. We want the rove to bite into the rib, really. Then with our cutters, we snip the nail off just about a millimetre above the top of the rove, just to give us a little bit of nail there to burr over, really. Now, as I say, all boat builders do the same sort of thing, but they all do it slightly differently. I like to start riveting the nail with the rounded end of the hammer because I feel that mushrooms it out a little bit more and then finish off with the flat of the hammer to tighten the rove down really. Okay Tim? Yeah. And that's that. Just working my way round the head, round the end of the nail with the round end of the hammer, with not big hits. Really, it's all in the wrist action rather than the arm action. Uh, the guy holding the dolly against the outside of the boat doesn't want to be hit too hard, really. So we'll uh, carry on and do the rest. Rove on, rove driver. Instead of the guy inside and the guy outside saying, you ready, are you on the nail? Yes, go on, hold on. When I put the rove on and the rove driver on, I always give it a couple of little taps just so the guy on the outside knows I'm about to hit it. But also from the, the sound it makes, I can tell whether the dolly is actually on the head of the nail. So if you just take the dolly off a minute, Tim. Yeah. That's quite a hollow sound there without the dolly on. OK, dolly on. And now with, when the dolly's on there, it's a much different sound. So I can usually, just by giving it a couple of little taps, tell whether the guy outside's on the right nail or not. OK. And then driving the, the rove on, I tend to finish my hitting with a sort of bit of a double hit. So then the guy on the outside knows he can relax for a minute because I've got to snip the nail off. And then hopefully now he's putting a bit of pressure on the dolly again. So when I start... the riveting with a double hit so the guy on the outside knows it's time to move on to the next nail. Repeat the process, really. Make sure the rib's looking in the right sort of place. The thing to remember when you're drilling out through is because the, the planks on the outside are, if you like, coming together like that, the angle of the outside plank isn't the same as the angle of this plank that I'm looking at here. So, on the flatter sections of the boat, that's not too much of a problem. But as you come round, especially the tight curves, you can end up with quite an angle between the planks because the lower one's bevelled off to sit the upper one against it. 
And so you just have to bear in mind, if I drill through 90 degrees to the plank I'm looking at in here, it's going to be at quite an angle to the outside plank. So you always try and work out in your head what the outside plank is, what the inside plank is, and drill through all, or drill through both of them, neither of them at 90 degrees, but both at the same sort of angle, if you, if you see what I mean. When I'm riveting the nail, if the dolly slides off the head of the nail, if the guy outside isn't paying attention or I've hit the nail too hard and the dolly's bounced off, the sound the nail makes changes. Um, and you could argue we ought to be wearing ear defenders because of the noise, but actually it's not that loud. And I tend to rivet using sound as much as what the nail looks like really because as the nail tightens the tap from the hammer the pitch increases um, and so I tend to be I wouldn't say I could rivet blindfold but you would get to know when a nail is tight and when a nail isn't tight if I just tap that nail that we've just riveted without the dolly on the head sounds quite hollow. If you can just stick the dolly back on the head tin. Now with the dolly on, it's a much different sound. So I can tell whether the guy outside's concentrating or not by the noise the nail's making. We've done two thirds of the nails there. It's probably a good time to take the clamp off. Just to make sure the rib is pulling out because every time we tighten it down, we're pulling it out. So we want to make sure we aren't stopping it from pulling out to the planking. And just eye up the line between the plank nails. And then if the drill's working, and then just drill out the last few nails. It's a favorite trick of the dolly holder is just as I've put the rove on the nail, the guy with the dolly hits or does that, smacks the dolly against the head and the rove drops off. Just in that split second between putting the rove on and sticking the rove driver on top, it gets a little bit annoying sometimes, but we, we haven't been too bad on this one. So we can happily leave that half, that rib, for a minute. While we're this side and the Dolly Holder's got his nails and his hammer and everything this side, we'll do the next rib now. This next rib, um, when we were steaming them in, 
it's good to put them in in one length gunnel to gunnel but obviously if we have a breakage or there's a defect in the rib we can end up putting in half ribs especially where the center plate case is because they're going to get cut off anyway um, and this is the case here so when we were steaming we stuck a little planking off cut in the slot just to give us something to push down against when we're steaming the rib into place. So we can leave that there, make sure there's no muck underneath it using our little stick with its measurements on we can see what, uh, what's going on with that. Tighten the clamp. That's looking fairly central up there. So we can quite happily drill out. three quarters of an inch overlap on our planking so that's what we're aiming for we're aiming for the the nail head on the outside to be about three eighths of an inch up from the bottom edge of the outside plank so when we sort of stick our drill bit there we just eye up down through have a guess at where the head's going to end up and press the trigger You may be wondering why we're not putting a, a rivet in this top plank here. Um, we will be soon, but uh, the way I build the boats really, um, I fit a little strip, a little four or five mil thick piece of timber in behind the ribs, uh, the depth of the gunnel. just to pack out the rib and to help stop the top plank splitting when the gunnel nails are put through. And if the ribs are nailed here, it does make it difficult to prise them off a bit to actually put this strip in place later. So if just by leaving the top nail undone, I can always drive a little wedge in there to lift that off the top plank so I can get my little sliver of timber down. <laughs> 